this originally wasn't going to be an on-camera video, but I feel cute and I didn't want to get cute for look. Skip, skip. But when does this game get good? So before I start on today's topic, I wanted to first thank Sailor Miles for allowing me to use her video to introduce the topic of today's discussion, which is why I think Lovey Simone is everyone's talking black girl. Now, I am not in any way critiquing her as an actress, as a person, but I make the realization that she's more known as a FaceTime and fan cast because she's for actual work. And I wanted to speak on it. And after I made that realization with her, I started seeing it with other black actresses as well. But she's going to focus on for this video because she had been the one I made the initial connection with. So before I get into all of this, I do want to talk about my rebrand. Now, if you guys remember from my last video, I introduced myself as Tolula Chanel, the headmistress of this academy. The headmistress of the Mutant Academy, which is what I call this space here. And that would also make you guys, the viewers, my students. So, hello, students. Welcome to, welcome back to the Mutant Academy. I am Tula Chanel, the headmistress of this Mutant Academy. And I know it's been like forever since I've uploaded content on YouTube, besides my last video. But I took time off to. Kind of, you know, work on my mental health and figure out what kind of content I wanted to make for this channel. And every time I was gonna make a life update video, um, life changed. So I did this life for you. Now, so a lot has changed between then and now, and I'm not gonna talk about all of it in this video because it's not all we're talking about. So while I was away thinking about content I was making for this channel as well as um, work on my mental health, I kind of learned that I have a like for commentary. So I started doing some commentary uh, for a podcast called the Mean Academy Podcast, which is also the same name as this, except this is a YouTube exclusive video. So I'm just calling this place the Mean Academy. However, I recently made the decision that I'm going to start posting my podcast on this channel along with some YouTube exclusive content as well. If you would like to listen to my podcast, you can find it on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and Google. The link to all of those will be in, this, in the description. So originally, this was supposed to be a writing commentary video, which is a video where I showcase my work in progress, where I discuss um, the topic of the video, which is similar to and inspired by art commentary, except instead of art, it's writing. So I do plan on doing more of that, as well as video game commentary, because I to some video games. The reason why this is um, not on camera video is because I did originally film writing footage for the commentary, except I lost about, I'm gonna say about six hours of writing footage. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, just gonna care plus, I didn't wanna get keep this look. So as you can see, I have my little braid out going and I'm wearing a, let me stand up so I can show the look as much as possible. Back up with it. I'm actually wearing a kind of like greenish, don't know the exact shade, but like green, well, let's see, which is exactly, well, not exactly, but similar to an outfit Lovey Simone has. So, as you can see, I'm doing a little Lovey Simone cosplay. And I look cute doing it. Before I get into the topic of this video, I have to give a disclaimer. Everything I say in this video is strictly my opinion, so please take what I say with a grain of salt. Any feelings that may have been heard were not intentional. Now, before I get into why I think she's a token black girl, let me introduce Lovey Simone to anyone that doesn't know who she is. Lovey Simone is an American actress born and raised in the Bronx. She's best known as Zora Greenleaf from the mega church drama Greenleaf. She then went on to act in guest appearances on shows like Blue Bloods and Dick Town, which she lent her voice to. She participated in an anthology series that took place during the 2020 pandemic lockdown called Social Distance and was a major character in the first season of Power Book 3 Raising Canaan. She's also played supporting roles on films such as Monster, 
Cher, The Walk, and The Fast Legacy. Her first starring role was in a feature film as Cella Summers and Cella in the States, an independent teen drama. Her most recent work was The Love Interest in 57 Seconds, a time travel thriller, what I may or may not do a review on. She also has small roles in the upcoming film, The Young Wife, and Manhunt, an upcoming television miniseries on Apple TV. Now, to define tokenism so that you and I are on the same page about uh, the usage of this word as I go through this entire video. According to Webster, tokenism is the policy and practice of making only a symbolic effort. This term is often used to describe the trope known as the token minority, in which a character is used to relate to an audience member that identifies as the same race, age, etc. as them, while being the only outcast in poor representation of the minority group. In Logan Simone's case, she's become the token black girl, not just in her works, but also social media, specifically Fancast Twitter. Fancast Twitter was the inspiration for me making this video. Um, but I'm going to get into that later. So, so far in Lovie Simone's career, she has done works that appeal to black audiences and the occasional project that appeals to everyone else. The one case I've seen so far where she's the token black girl was The Craft Legacy, a sequel to the 1996 cult classic The Craft. Now, because of my religious and spiritual beliefs, I'm not much into films or witchy elements, so neither of those films appeal to me. But I watched the scene pack of her character because I just wanted to see her. With that in mind, I am not the right person to say whether these films are good or bad, but I can say it failed some of the characters. Um, and off topic, <laughs> I recently found out that Rachel True, not original, was actually hired because of diversity. She was a diversity hire, which explains why. From what I've seen, because again, I'm not too deep into it, but I have seen an article years back where um, basically she said she was like left out from like press tours and panels and um, stuff like that. She was left out. So, yeah, she is a diversity hire, which is she's not bad. I love Richard Trigger. In the Craft Legacy, Lovey Simone plays Tabby, one of the four main witches. What makes her the token black character is that. She's the only black lead, and she doesn't have much of a backstory or her own arc outside of the main character. Who is the who is the word protagonist? The only time we get to learn anything about her is during the game of Two Truths and a Lie, where we learn that she fears for her brother's safety and that she would like to have more black friends. Now, I give two reasons as to why that line doesn't make sense, even though I did not watch the film in its entirety. But the scene packs um, that was just of her well enough to kind of show what I need to know about her character. And unfortunately, it wasn't much. So reason number one, the line about her brother was supposed to represent how black boys and men are killed because of police brutality. But the way it was written does not give us this context. If it wasn't for me watching an interview with Lovey Simone, I would still be confused as to why Tabby feels for her brother's safety. And what also makes this my jar is that the audience don't get to see Tabby's family, so we're not even sure if this brother is older or younger, and it shows how much thought was given to her character. Now, the second reason why this line does not make sense to me is because Tabby went to school with people of different races. I did watch a commentary from Modern Girls, who I have a kind of iffy relationship with as far as their content. It's just that whole Mean Girls thing kind of turned me off from them. If you know, you know. But they did point out that some of the extras that were used for the school scenes were black. So um, there, you can better hear from them. I am going to link that video in the description. That was something they noticed, and I thought it was great that they pointed that out and added to why that line doesn't make sense. So, like I said before, I didn't watch the original craft, but from what I understand, Rachel Schiff's character, Rochelle, was an outcast because she was the only black girl at the school, or that people were being racist to her because they could get away with it. 
I'm not exactly sure, but someone who has watched the film could um tell you better. Now, I think Legacy wanted to mimic that storyline with Tabby, but it doesn't work well because of where we are in society. Basically, like, you can't be racist to a black kid in a school. And people not going to, like, try to jump you because of it. I mean, I haven't been in school in like over 10 years, so maybe it can be racism in school grounds. I don't know. But yeah. That's kind of what I would think that a movie like this set in real, set in some of the reality in 2020, you kind of be like, yeah, we're going to jump you for being racist or something like that. Maybe I think they want to do that with Tabby and it just didn't work because of where we are in society. Hi, editing Tallulah here. So the audio in this section of the video was a little off, so I'm going to explain it here. What I was trying to say was that instead of trying to mimic the storyline that Rochelle had with Tabby, I think a better storyline would have been if they talked about how Tabby may feel outcasted from the Black community. But in order to do that, they would have had to expound on her character more, which as we can see from the final product, they were unwilling to do that. Overall, I think Tappy is a prime example about how not all representation is good representation. I think it's fascinating to see a black girl in a fantasy character in a film that's not about slavery or police brutality. What's the point of even having a black character there if you're not going to do anything with her? Um, I mean... Truth be told, I do like Tabby as a character. And, um, Tabby is kind of the mom for another group, which I do take some issue with because why is the only black girl in the group the mom friend? On the same token, considering the other people she was with, it also makes sense. But I can at least say they allow her to do the iconic We Are the Weirdos, Mr. The Run. And I've only seen that, um, Lying in just on Tumblr. I didn't see it in the original film because I didn't watch it. But that's how iconic that line is. And so it was recognizable. Now, I know in the trailer they had um, the white protagonist literally say it, but in the actual film, she Tabby got to say it. So I just thought that was cool. Now, to get on the fan cast Twitter, and the instance where I really see Lovey Simone's being used as the dark skin, oh, uh, hold on, as a token black girl. And originally I was going to use this section to strictly talk about a character named Dorcas Meadows, but a lot of things had occurred between when I first originally started this script, initially started this script, and now, and I just um, speak about uh, a little bit of the stuff that I saw. So, but I also don't know what fan casting is. It's when someone suggests an actor would be perfect for a live action version of a cartoon, be it or a book character, and can be done to help fans of these franchises have visual aids while reading the books or writing slash reading fan fiction. It's mostly a harmless act, but it sometimes comes with issues such as racism and colorism. And this relates to Lovey Simone because she seems to be known as a fan cast, she seems to be more known as a fan cast than an actress, especially in the case of Dorcas Meadows. And I may be saying that name wrong, I'm literally saying it how it phonetically looks, so I do apologize if that offends someone. So, I cannot tell you who Dorcas Meadows is or anything about her. I just know that she's a witch and she's a part of the Harry Potter franchise. Or at least like the spin-off series within that franchise called The Mortars. I really don't know. And I care nothing about that franchise at all. Again, not much into magical elements. And on top of that, I don't care about the author, who is JK Rowling's not a good person from what I understand. But yeah, I don't care for the author. And considering um Lovie Simone's work in the Craft Legacy, it makes sense as to why she is the main fan cast for that character. And I don't think it's wrong that they fan cast her as Dorcas Miller, but my issue is why is it that I cannot find Lovey Simone content without Dorcas Meadows content? Like sometimes I like to go through her tags on like TikTok and Twitter 
And um, Instagram for they mess up tags. And it's often followed by Dorcas Meadows, especially on TikTok. So my thing is, I would just like for the fans of the Martyrs to just keep Dorcas Meadows stuff in Dorcas Meadows tags and stop clogging up the Lovey Simone tags and stuff that's not about her. That's just annoying to me, but um, honestly, if I'm asking for too much, let me know. Now, I want to talk about Princess Tiana. Okay, this was another movie that did not appeal to me, and I know it's saying something considering she's Disney's only black animated princess. Halle Bailey would be um, Disney's live, only live action princess for now. Because we're going to have more, and I don't care what the Disney dolls have said. I don't care what Disney fans have said about it. Because they still crying over a black mermaid, and I'm like, it's going on a year of this one. The movie been out for almost a year. The now she dropped in, 20, in 2019. If they ain't changed it by now, they ain't going to change it. Just uh, grow up. When it was announced that Disney was considering the Princess and the Frog for a live action remake, but not actually in the process of making it, fan cast Twitter couldn't wait to recycle their three main black actresses. Zendaya, Ryan Destiny, and Lovey Simone. Just for this video, I am not here to argue about the validity of referring to Zendaya as a black woman. That's not the point of this video. If you understand my fan cast with Zendaya as Tiana is an issue, good for you. Now, my issue with them fan casting Lovey Simone as Tiana has to do with Lovey Simone's singing ability. So she did post a video on her stories of a song snippet where she's featured on a track with her twin sibling who does music. Um, Ray of the Giant, I will link some of the music in the description as well. I love them. But Lovey is a talented singer. However, she has a very kind of, you know, low growth almost similar to T-Boss and like it works better for like maybe an R&B. Or, um, a, you know, a neo soul, a neo soul type vibe, I guess, say even jazz a little bit. Um, and also, I think vocally she could be someone, but not exactly compared to Tony Braxton. But basically, I just don't think vocal wise she is Tiana. I feel like considering the fact that Tiana was voiced by a nigga Nelly Rose, um, Tiana should be played by a singer and actress that has a Broadway experience. And my personal pick for Tiana for that reason is Haley Kilgore. Aesthetically, aesthetically, Haley looks like Tiana. Along with the fact that she has that booming Broadway voice that's similar to Anika Don Rose. And a fun fact is, um, Haley Kiddo's current acting gig is a younger version of an Anika Don Rose character. So, I don't know, man. It just feels like it's almost lined up for that to be a thing. And I'm not trying to say that my personal pick for Tiana is better than anyone else's. But my reason for picking Haley literally come, literally has to do with her ability, not just aesthetics. And with Lovey, it feels like you're choosing her as Tiana because aesthetically she looks like Tiana. Oh, and uh, I'm also going to link Haley Kidgar's music in, a, in the description as well because she is also a talented singer. And funny thing, when this conversation about like who should play Tiana came around, Lovey so much even live with her twin siblings saying that she would like to play Raymond. Now, because it's her, I think she meant it as a joke, but this one of times I'm not sure because she did sound like she was dead serious about it. But I, I mean, why not? Because in a little mermaid, Scud was um gender bent to fit Nora Long. And off the record, I'm not a big Nora Long fan. I don't even use her stage name because it's so... I don't like it. But I can say that her passing a skull um, is perfect because the point of skull is to have an annoying voice. 
Um, Nora Plum has a very annoying voice. And I know that's so, and I know that's saying a lot for someone who's just now starting to go confident in her voice. I don't mean because I had serious self esteem issues when it comes to my voice. Now, before anyone tries to say anything in the comments, because uh, um, as if you paid attention to um my writing stuff that um apparently has been helping people, which is why I'm not gonna take it down, even though I think it's cringy. Um, you know I've been using Lovey Simone as like a fake a face claim for someone in my book that I'm still working on, the Sour Dolls book. That's another thing I'm gonna talk about that in another video or a podcast episode. But yeah. Um, for one of the characters in the book I'm working on, as well as, um, a couple of the characters in other writing projects I'm working on. So, I'm not saying that, or using her as a fan cast for a number of savage character is, well, one, they're not the same thing. And two, I'm not saying that they're wrong. I just find it frustrating that she's more recognized as a fan cast of a popular character and a Wattpad face queen. Then she has her actual words. So when the trailer for 57 seconds dropped, I didn't see it be acknowledged by any of the Mortis fans or the people that want her to appear in Euphoria or the Gossip Girl reboot as one of his love interests. Nor did any of these people ensure that 57 seconds was talked about for a while. Um, and literally I said, I even tweeted about this one time saying that Ever since 2020, I've heard all these people been saying that Lovey Smell should be this, that, and the third. But I'm like, where were you people when we got the trailer for 57 seconds? Yes, she was just a love interest, but like, come on. I'm to change a little again. So I just want to point out that at the time I made it to this video, the trailer for Manhunt that had just recently dropped, and I am seeing the same pattern of the only people who care enough to actually promote and stay interested in updates about this show are the same people who were promoted 57 seconds as well as just being fans of still in the space and keeping it relevant and it is not the people who want her to be in euphoria it is not the mortars fans and it's definitely not the people who want her to be monet's love interest so i'm just saying the pattern has repeated itself now along with her being a fan cast for those talking black girls, she's also their talking dark skin girl. And let me talk about the recast Shuri fiasco, if y'all don't remember. So I'm about to refresh it real quick, but it's gonna relate to Levy Simone, so just wait, cause it's getting there. So in December of 2020, while conversations about the COVID vaccine were resurfacing, Letitia Rice shared a YouTube live stream that talked about the vaccine. I didn't see the video because I didn't care enough to listen to the conversation surrounding the vaccine at the time. And in case anyone's uh, curious, yes, I am fully vaccinated. I think I'm going to be another vaccine. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I may need to check that just in case. I did have four shots. And I think I'm supposed to be fifth one, so I'm looking for that. But people who did see the video were alerting her that there was some transphobic rhetoric in the video and that she should take the link down. At the time, she was unwilling to apologize and listen for the sake of having her own opinion and not appealing to the popular one. Um, and then she followed up with liking tweets that say, cancel Black Panther 2. Now, she did issue an apology the next morning, but by that point, the damage was done. People had ran her off Twitter. And yeah, it's not an impact. So I understood her actions as she was acting out because she had, because she was German Chadwick, who passed away literally about a good two to four months before that happened. And I just think that she just got off the internet for a while to just, you know, be by herself and deal with her emotions off the internet, she will be fine. But um, then months later, around um, fall of 2021, I cannot give an exact time, but it was around that time, 
We hadn't heard anything about Letitia Wright for a while until it came out that she had Miss Rowland anti vax rhetoric on the set of Wakanda Forever. And it was causing the latest on the set along with the um recast the Shala Fiasco, which I'm not getting into this video. And the um she was also injured as well. So that was causing delays. The, uh, but because around the time she got injured, I'm not sure injured once, but I think it was she got injured twice as well, and it was adding to the delays of the film. But anyway, um, articles when I said that she was spreading the um, anti-vax rhetoric, which um, that article was later to be proven a lie. Um, a year or so, over a year or so later, about November 2022, Letitia Wright called them called out the Hollywood Report for spreading false reports about her. So that whole article and report saying that she's spreading anti-vax rhetoric was all a lie, and I was one of the people that fell for it. So yeah, call me whatever. But by this point, after. After she out of them, we had already went through this whole um hashtag recast Shuri thing, and I participated in it as well because again I believe the articles and I didn't fully know it was gonna happen, and I even got into arguments regarding it. It was just it was crazy over something that later on didn't even matter. Now, the part where it has to do with Lovey Simone is obviously she was a popular choice. And the reason I say she's a token dark skin has to do with another article that had out five suggestions for sure recast. Lovey Simone was the only dark skin person on that list. Um, the other people on that list were Yara Shadidi, Amanda Steinberg, and a couple of other light skin actresses that I cannot remember at the moment. Why weren't there other dark skin actors on that list? And like I said, none of that even mattered because Letitia didn't go in, as we saw, Letitia didn't go anywhere. And I can't be mad at her because I did love Wakanda forever and I loved her in it. Um, the only reason why I had yet to follow her back is because I unfollowed her when the anti vax stuff came out, but then the only reason I haven't re followed her. Um, it's because I'm embarrassed. So once I get past the embarrassment, I'm going to follow her again. This kind of situation has made me realize how much people, especially Twitter users, don't know or try to know other dark-skinned actresses outside of Lovey Simone, which has led me to believe she's being tokenized. And to further prove this point, I want to talk about how she often used to downplay other actresses. Now... For a moment of honesty, because I just love calling myself out on this channel, I am partially guilty of this because I have said that Lovey Simone should have been Vanessa in the live action Little Mermaid. This was strictly based on how she and Halle Bailey have similar features, uh, similar facial features, and I thought it would make sense for Eric to almost marry someone with dark color locks. The same way animated Eric almost married someone with brown hair. Now, I had good intentions and logic saying that, but in the case I mentioned, like, it's the moment you sit down and play the video of Joy Sunday. Off topic, Jessica Alexander was a fine Vanessa, and she gave her more sex appeal than she already had. I loved her. Amazing. And she don't play by half. I love that even more. Joy Sunday is a Nigerian American actress whose most notable role is Bianca Barclay from Tim Burns Wednesday on Netflix now. That was on the show I wasn't into, so I could be saying her um, name wrong, so I do apologize if it's wrong. She's a beautiful dark skinned woman that rocks a shaved head and was allowed to keep this look as Bianca. However, not everyone saw the beauty in her, and other black women have said that she was masculine and unattractive. 
I want to talk more about um Joyce Sunday and Bianca in an upcoming episode of my podcast talking about um people not supporting black representation. The women who said that um Joyce Sunday was masculine and unattractive have even went on to say that um Lucky Simone and Ryan Destiny as well is better representation of a feminine presenting black woman. And here's the thing. I do think Love is Simone's beautiful. I would never negate that, but I just feel like she represents that conventionally attractive black woman. Lovey is thin. She keeps her hair long, kind of like how I do. Um, She doesn't have the wide nose. Her edges are always laid, and when she does her makeup, it's on point. But Joy Sunday, who was also beautiful, she represents that black woman who wears, you know, shaved head and looks beautiful doing it. Like, um, yeah, Joy Sunday is very beautiful. I just can't stop looking at her. Like, even though I didn't watch Wednesday because I just didn't care for it, I just can't stop looking at Joy Sunday. And I feel like both of them represent different facets of black women because we're just a multifaceted group that we deserve multi-facets of representation so I don't understand why we're pinning them against each other when we could be uplifting both of them the only other reason why I was so bothered about um using Lovey Simone to downplay Joy someday um is the fact that Lovey Simone didn't even get the best roles in real life um out of everything she's done, my favorite characters from her are Zora Greenleaf, Stella Summers, and most recently, Jay Love from 57 Seconds. Um, Tabby was a great character. Like I said, I love Tabby. But, you know, the movie doesn't sit well with me because spiritual beliefs and the writing didn't give me that much to care for. Wendy from The Walk was also a nice character, but the story surrounding it was so bland that she became the only character I cared for. Side note, I did do an episode of my podcast talking about that movie. That will also be linked in the description. Um, but I'm also going to upload it to YouTube as well. So you can either wait for that or just go to the link in the description. All of those roles did was provide content for the writing community to make book edits. And that's about it. Uh, I'm not looking forward to see her play a former slave in Manhunt, but I will sit through it for her. I'm holding out hope for the young wife, which I was already going to watch regardless if she was in it or not. But my thing is, instead of using her to downplay other actresses, especially other dark-skinned actresses that are getting booked, why are we not advocating for her to have better roles? And I'm going to act this in because I'm still upset. Um, on top of that, we're going to have to, not even us at this point, I just was the, well, of course, you know, more independent stuff, I said, support independent projects, and the industry is going to have to start being more accepting to Black women, and we're going to start supporting more Black women, especially if they're, like, um, trying to do behind the scenes stuff, like get their own channels, get their own TV shows, stuff like that. And personally, I feel like I can't support everything and I don't want to support everything, but we really have to start being like more supportive towards the black women who are actually trying to do better about our representation. And that's just my long winded way of saying, I'm talking about anybody else that's not Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, I still got beef with that one. And she's only catching strays right now because I got beef with Tyler Perry. But I'm going to move for now. But in conclusion, I think people appreciate Lovey Simone more for her aesthetics than her talent. Like I said before, she's a beautiful young woman, and it's amazing that she has this mainstream presence as a dark skinned black woman with natural hair. 
Okay, however, I would like for her talent to be as appreciated as her beauty. The only thing, the only way we'll see her in many roles and spaces that we want to see her in is if we support the work she already has now and upcoming. Along with that, Lovey Simone should be the only dark skinned actress with natural hair that we should be supporting. There are other actresses in her age range that have dark skin, natural hair, and the vocal ability to carry the roles. She's often fantastic for. They deserve the same support that is given to the now million Lovey Simone fan cast. One day, I hope Lovey Simone gets that one Hollywood feature film that will push her over the top and get her the space that she deserves. If that isn't what she wants, then I just hope she gets whatever she wants. If you made it to the end of this video, I really do appreciate it. Please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And just a reminder, again, I will be uploading my podcast on here soon, so be on the lookout for that. If you would like to support the channel with a monetary donation, the link to my Kofi page will be in the description. There you will find snippets from my novel and other writing content I'm working on. Now, a way you can support me for free is to follow my social medias. Um, to Lula Chanel on Tumblr and TikTok, to Lula Chanel 94 on Instagram, and to Lula underscore Chanel on Twitter. That's what still call it Twitter because I don't care what that man renamed it to. It's Twitter. And I will link all of those in the description. Last but certainly not least, I was recently featured in a magazine article briefly discussing the fat shame incident that happened in May of last year. For those of you who are not aware, I went viral for posting my Little Mermaid cosplay and received a lot of fat phobic bullying because of it. The love and support outweighed the hate and it led to a Love My Body campaign launch. The article talking about the campaign launch will also be in the description and I love cover. So thank you again for watching this video and this has been a message from your head mistress. Hi.